Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real life American English. Today we're going to learn to avoid some important mistakes. So let's get started. First, this is not correct. So you feel like going to those trips to the UK is sort of where you became fluent? We don't say going to those trips. When you talk about trips, we use a different preposition. We use the preposition on. Going on those trips is correct. Don't say going to those trips. So when you use the word trip, use the preposition on. You go on a trip. You don't go to a trip. You go on a trip. We usually go on a trip to Myrtle Beach each summer. Going on a trip, are you? Weirdly enough, I too went on a trip. A trip that I lied about needing for therapeutic purposes. I'm going on a trip to spend a little time with animals. I'm going on a trip to Thunder Bay if you're... And I mean, if I were going to go on a trip on an airplane and I got a fortune cookie that said don't go, I mean... I'm going on a trip. And uh, right now she's actually going on a trip to San Diego. Uh, they were going on a trip to get Asta, um, well, how shall we put it? She's going on a trip. You saying so go on a trip to Disney World next year also? Oh, so I, I told him that you went on a trip. When Eric was five years old, his parents went on a trip to Spain or France or someplace like that. All right, we're going on a trip to Kickapoo Mountain. We should go on a trip. They went on a trip, Roger. They didn't get kidnapped. Example, they're going on a trip. Don't say they're going to a trip. Say they're going on a trip. Intonation, they're going on a trip today. Let's practice. Are they going on a trip today? That's right, they're going on a trip today. But what if you say, going to a trip? Will people understand you? Sure, they'll understand you, but it sounds weird. And if you're learning English as a second language, people will think you don't speak the language. Because it sounds strange, it sounds weird. So don't say go to a trip, say go on a trip. And keep watching until the end to practice with more examples of when we say go on versus go to. This is also not correct. The next mistake that I see people doing when they are applying for jobs. We don't say the next mistake I see people doing. We're talking about the word mistake. We have to use the verb make. So it's correct to say the next mistake I see people making, not doing. I make mistakes all the time. And families make mistakes. And I am the... I'm the king of mistakes. I'm really sorry I lied to you, but you're kind of sort of super cute, and I know I always make mistakes, and I know this was a big mistake, but I just... I'm not perfect. I make mistakes, but I'm trying. We make mistakes, and we get married, and we go to bars. And Be the best of the best it means you make mistakes, and then you go on. It's just like the rest of us. I made a mistake. I really made a mistake. But Kendrick is going to make a mistake. If my husband made a mistake, if out of negligence or... If you make a mistake, get all tangled up. Just tangle on. So that means that when I make a mistake... People make mistakes, Will. That's what high school's about. I made a mistake, all right? What I'm saying is... I would hate to see you make a mistake. Remember, we make a mistake. We don't do a mistake. And mistake is countable. I can say make a mistake, or I can say make mistakes for more than one. Example, he made a lot of mistakes on his test. I don't say he did a lot of mistakes on his test. I use make in the past made. He made a lot of mistakes on his test. Let's practice. Did he make a lot of mistakes on his test? That's right. He made a lot of mistakes on his test. But what if you say do a mistake? Will people understand you? Sure, they'll understand you, but it sounds strange. And if you're learning English as a second language, people will think you don't speak the language because it sounds strange. So don't say do a mistake, say make a mistake. Let's watch another clip. So is the phrase talk in English wrong? Is that a mistake? Let's see how people use this phrase in real life. The first video I want to show you is from another YouTube English teacher. Her name is Stephanie. She has a lot of videos and she's been teaching English for a long time. And she uses the phrase talk in English in her video. Let's watch. And then she just watched so much TV in English and she listened to so much music in English that now we can talk in English and have an entire conversation and she understands everything. Recently, I got a question from one of our members 
asking if it's correct to say talk in English. And the answer is no, it's not correct. I speak two languages. I speak English and I speak Spanish. If somebody came up to me and asked me, do you talk in Spanish? I would think this person's English is not very good because it sounds very strange. It sounds weird. It sounds off. It doesn't sound correct. Say, speak English. You might find a few examples on the internet of native speakers saying talk in English. That doesn't mean it's correct. It sounds weird. When you talk about languages, use speak. Do you speak Spanish? Do you speak English? Don't say, do you talk in English? If you say it, you'll sound weird. Don't do it. So if you want to sound natural, if you want to sound correct, say, I speak English. If you want to sound weird and strange, say, I talk in English. It's your choice. Do you speak English? He doesn't speak English. Since when do you speak Italian? Bar Americano, you don't speak English. How the hell do you know how to speak Arabic? Before I got paid to uh, speak French. So with languages, we use speak. I speak two languages, I speak English, I speak Spanish. And we use the word speak when referring to public. Example, you speak in public. You don't talk in public, you speak in public. Now he has this thing about speaking in public. He's all freaked out. I hate speaking in public. He's just a little shy about speaking in public. You be very mindful of how you act and speak in public. Keep watching for a more detailed explanation of the difference between talk and speak. Speak is more formal than talk. And we have to look at the prepositions. We have different prepositions. You can use to or with. And all combinations are correct. I talk to my friends. I talk with my friends. I speak to my friends. Or I speak with my friends. These are all correct. But there's a difference. What's the difference? Well, speak is more formal than talk, and the preposition with is more formal than the preposition to. So the least formal and most common and most natural is talk to. I talk to my friends every day. I talk to my friends on the phone. And speak with is the most formal. So avoid using speak with. It's too formal in most cases. I'll tell you a story. When I was dating my wife, she called my house and my father answered. And she said, can I speak with Kevin? And my father was worried. He thought it was a serious phone call. He thought something happened. So in conversational English, we use talk to. It's the least formal. And when I ask a question, I end with a preposition to. Who is he talking to? The answer, he's talking to his friends. If I ask the question, who is he speaking with, it sounds strange. It sounds too formal. So I ask the question, who is he talking to? The answer, he's talking to his friends. Let's practice. Who is he talking to? That's right. He's talking to his friends. So remember, use speak when referring to languages. I speak two languages. It's not correct to say I talk two languages. We have to use speak in this case. I speak two languages. So, sometimes we say go with no to, with no preposition to. For example, you can say go on a hike, or go on a trip, go on a cruise. And with this expression, go on a wild goose chase. We use go plus preposition on. Go on a wild goose chase. What does it mean? It means to search for something that you're not going to find. It's a waste of time. You're looking for something that's not there. Maybe it doesn't exist. That's a wild goose chase. And you can use different verbs. You can use go, go on a wild goose chase. In the past, went. We went on a wild goose chase. And you can use the verb send. They sent me on a wild goose chase. They told me to go look for something that wasn't there. Let's hear some examples. If you ask me, Sam, this is a wild goose chase. Yeah, that's a wild goose chase over here at Nakatomi Plaza. It's possible. So it's more likely the killer's trying to send us on a wild goose chase. We're going on a wild goose chase! Why did you send me on a wild goose chase, Jack? We're on a wild goose chase, okay. and believe me. Okay, I'm giving this Norman guy another 15, but I think he's got us on a wild goose chase. Example, he's a detective, and someone died, and he thinks the person was murdered. So he's looking for the killer. But in reality, the person wasn't murdered. 
It was an accident. So he's looking for a killer that doesn't exist. I can say he's on a wild goose chase. Or I can use the verb go. In the past went. He went on a wild goose chase looking for this killer that didn't exist. His captain told him to go find the killer. So I can say his captain sent him on a wild goose chase. Let's practice. Is he on a wild goose chase? That's right. He's on a wild goose chase. Let's practice in the past. Did he go on a wild goose chase? That's right. He went on a wild goose chase. Looking for a killer that didn't exist. Let's practice. Did his captain send him on a wild goose chase? That's right. His captain sent him on a wild goose chase.